What's going on guys? Welcome back. It's been a while. I've missed you all so much. Except for you, Derek. Anyways, I have something really great planned for you today. You see, a while back I was browsing the YouTube math channels, because you know I do that from time to time, and I came across this nice little video by this small time math YouTuber that presented a very nice geometric theorem that I had never seen before. In fact, it wasn't even presented as a theorem. He called it Lemma Number 2. Check it out. If you remove one of those lighthouses and put the observer in its place, this distance product from all of the remaining lighthouses happens to equal the number of lighthouses that you started with. Again, no matter how many lighthouses there are, And if those two facts seem crazy, I agree. Isn't that just adorable? Okay, let's recap what this theorem is saying. It says, if we have a unit circle, and we put n equally spaced points on the unit circle, choose a point, and connect all of the other points to that one point we've chosen, we create some line segments, and the claim is that the product of all of the lengths of those line segments is equal to the number of points that we put on the circle. Now, I find this really surprising. These lengths are not nice numbers. They're very irrational for the most part. And, you know, it wasn't clear to me why this was true at all, but I decided to take this young man's word for it. So, let's go ahead and go through the proof of this. <laughs> One second. Ah, oh, crap. <sighs> I don't really know the password to this. This wouldn't have been a problem if I had Dash Lane installed on this mainframe spaceship computer. Oh, you don't know what Dash Lane is? Let me tell you about Dash Lane, man. So first of all, it stores all your passwords so you won't have to deal with any issues like this. But not only that, it generates more secure passwords for you. This is all encrypted, by the way. No one has access to this, not even Dash Lane themselves. Everything is encrypted. So. You don't have to worry about remembering passwords anymore besides a single master password. I think we can all manage that. This is a huge problem for me personally because a lot of places online will ask me to put a symbol and a number and a, a superhero emblem all my passwords so I just add those things randomly to my normal password but then I forget it. Oh, but if I forget my password and try to reset it, I can't use any of my previous seven passwords that I used before in this place? Like, this is ridiculous. Anyways, you can download Dashlane for free on one device, or you can use our code down below to get a free 30-day trial of the premium version. I highly recommend it. Use it. It's humongous. It's great. It's tremendous. Use it. Dead serious. All right. Now, uh, since I can't access this, which wouldn't have been a problem if I had Dashlane, I'm gonna go ahead and teleport to the void, and I'll meet you there, and we'll go through this again. Now, something I like to do when I see a theorem or result for the first time, is I like to just verify one of the simpler but not quite trivial cases of the claim. So in this case, let's verify this claim when there are four points on the circle. So let's set this up. We have four points, so n equals four. The claim is that if we take one of these points, choose it as the observer is what 3blue1brown calls it, but whatever. Take a point, connect all of the other points to that point. So we get these three line segments here. The claim is that the product of the lengths of all of these lines is going to be equal to the number of points on the circle. So let's see what we have in this case. So the circle is of radius 1, and we have one of these line segments that goes all the way across the circle. So its length is 2. So we have a length of 2. Now these two are hypotenuses or hypotenai of these right triangles. Since the radius is 1 and these two sides are just the radius, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to get these lengths. So the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared is the square root of 2. So we have the square root of 2. And then we have the second one, which is also the square root of 2. And we need to product this out. Let's see. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. That's what makes it the square root of 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So we get 4, which is indeed the number of points on the circle, n. So we see it work in this case when n equals 4. Now the cases of n equals 1 and n equals 2 are also easy to verify, but they're kind of trivial and they don't really 
demonstrate what's happening in an interesting way. And the case when n equals 3, I'll leave as an exercise. Now, this is a pretty weird claim to me. I mean, here this doesn't seem so strange, but this is always true. So if we just start adding all kinds of points here, just all over, we have all of these lengths. And it's not clear that these lengths should be any nice number. In fact, they generally won't be. You can imagine just adding 50 dots on here, equally spaced. We have some really short line segments and a lot of them that are close to two. And it's not clear at all that this should product to the number of points or even any kind of whole number at all. So this is a pretty weird geometric theorem to me. So let's try to come up with a general proof for this. Now, the key to getting a proof for this is to link this very geometric statement into more of an arithmetical arena because we are, you know, calculating stuff and multiplying stuff. So we, it's phrased geometrically, so we need to put it into some kind of arithmetic world, some numerical world. And the way to do that is to use the complex plane and complex numbers. And the hint for knowing to do that is the fact that these equally spaced points on the unit circle correspond precisely to roots of the number one. In other words, if there's n points on the circle, then those points are the nth roots of unity. Each of those numbers are complex numbers that when raised to the nth power will get us one. So if we go back to the example we looked at, those four points correspond to the fourth roots of one, which are one, negative one, i, and negative i. So this is definitely the natural way to look at this problem. So let's go ahead and set this up again. Except now, we are in the complex plane, not just in circle world. So let this just be an arbitrary number of points rather than however many I drew. So this is just n points. Now, each of these are complex numbers and an easy way to get an expression for them is to use the angle here and think about them exponentially. Use the exponential and use their angle. So this angle is just 2 pi divided by n. We've cut the circle up into n points. So these complex numbers are e to the 2 pi over n times k, which is going to be our counter, so to speak, times i. So we're letting k range from k equals 1, which would be this complex number here, all the way to k equals n, which would be 1, as when k is n, we have a cancellation, e to the 2 pi i, and that is 1. So we're back here when we do that. So all of these numbers are given like that. Here they are. These are the nth roots of unity expressed in a convenient way for us right now. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to get lengths. And the way to get a length in the complex plane is, of course, the absolute value of a complex number. That is the distance from the origin. So what we're gonna do to get what we want here is kind of shift this over, right? Because the absolute value of these points is, is not what we want. We wanna be able to connect all of these to a single point. So that's a little bit different. So we're gonna shift the whole circle over. So here we've shift the whole circle over. And if we took the absolute values now, the distance from the origin is precisely what we want. It's the lengths that we want. All we did was take the circle and shift it over to the left. So these numbers are e to the 2 pi k over n times i minus 1. Just subtract 1 that shifts everything over. Now we want to product these lengths. So we're going to take the absolute value, which gives us the length, and we want to product them. So I'll use capital pi notation. Now here's the thing. We don't want to include 0 itself in the product. That corresponds to there being a line segment of length zero from the observer point to itself. We don't want to count that. We count that in the product, it's zero, so the product is zero. So we're going from k equals one to n minus one. So that's going to be starting here and then all the way around to here. So this is actually the expression that gives us exactly what we're looking for. And our goal is to show that this is equal to n. That's what we need to prove. All right, now that we know what we're looking for, we just need to make it appear. So remember, these numbers here are the nth roots of unity. These are the numbers that when you raise them to the nth power, you get one. In other words, these are the roots of the polynomial z to the n minus one. If you plug any of these numbers into this, you'll raise it to the nth power, you'll get one. You subtract one, you get zero. Those are the roots. Now, since it's a polynomial with a coefficient of one and we know all the roots, 
We know how it factors. It's just going to be the product of z minus each root. So we have the product from k equals 1 to n of z minus e to the 2 pi k over n times i. So that's just the product of the linear factors of this polynomial. We know all the roots, so we know how it factorizes. All right, so this is pretty close to what we're actually looking for. Uh, the first thing we should do is we need an n-1 here, not an n. So the n case, when k equals n, is the root 1, right? If we have k equal to n, the n's cancel, so we get e to the 2 pi i, and that's just a really fancy way of writing 1. So we can write this. All right, I just removed z minus 1 from this overall product, and so now our index goes to n minus 1, which is what we want. So that's good. Uh, another thing we should do is, in our expression, we have e to all this crap minus 1. Here we have it flipped. So let's reverse this. So we'll just multiply each term by negative 1, and that's going to give us negative 1 in this product, which is negative 1 to the n minus 1 pulled outside, so we can do that. And there we go. Now, another thing we have is absolute values. Here, we want that, so we'll take some absolute values. Ah, but first, let's divide both sides out by z minus 1. We don't really want that, so we'll just bring it to the other side. All right, now we want absolute values, so we'll take the absolute value of both sides. Now remember, the absolute value of a product is the product of absolute values. So when we take the absolute value on this side, we can actually just take the product of these absolute values, but negative one to the n minus one is either one or negative one. So the absolute value of that is one. So we don't need to write that anymore. And we can also, be, for the same reason, we can bring the absolute value that remains into this product. So we get this. I've done this a few times and I, I can never get the absolute value symbol on the first try. <laughs> anyway, now this is pretty close to what we want. All we need is to have z equal to 1, but we have a little problem. If z is equal to 1, then we're going to end up dividing by 0 on the other side, so we can't do that. But what we can do instead is just take the limit. Now, when it comes to taking this limit, on this side, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just plugging in z equals 1. Here, there's no issue with doing that, so let's do that. And at last, we see the creature we're looking for makes its final appearance. There we go. This is what we want. Now, we need to take the limit on this side. In this case, we can't substitute z equals 1 because we have the division by 0 issue. Now the limit of an absolute value is the absolute value of the limit, so we can move the absolute value to the outside and apply L'Hopital's rule. So the derivative of this top is n times z to the n minus 1, and the bottom is just 1. Now this limit we can substitute z equals 1, and when we do that we get n times 1 to the n minus 1, which is n over 1, that's all an absolute value. So we have n in absolute value, but n is a natural number. So the absolute value of n is just n, and so we get that n equals And so that concludes the proof. This is precisely the product of all those lengths that we're looking for, and we've shown that it is equal to n. So that's it, that's the proof. If we have n equally spaced points on a unit circle, and we connect all of those points to one of the other points and take the product of all those lengths, that's equal to the number of points. I find that really surprising. I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I find that weird. It's not, it wasn't apparent to me at all why that worked when I first saw it. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite YouTube questions I've ever seen. Uh, for a few reasons. I mean, 
it's a very simple geometric statement that's easy to understand. You can verify some results pretty easily that are still interesting, not too trivial. And at the same time, it's really surprising. It, like I said, it wasn't clear to me why this is true. And another reason I like it is because the proof is a very nice example of using the complex plane to solve a, a geometric problem. So overall, this is a great problem and I really enjoyed it. 10 out of 10 rating. Thank you, three blue, one brown. Or is it one blue, three? Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one, later.